福特的属性课程的说明会。那三一同学已经有三年左右的时间没有收到我们第一处关于属性课程的消息。那希望我们希望能在明年度的差不多七八月份的时候，办理这个主办课程这样。那我们现在非常热烈的欢迎我们我们第二部的国际部的主任 Miss Caroline。
Um, actually, Oxford is not but a campus, and this is one thing that always makes us laugh. Uh, when we're in Oxford, we, we see a lot of visitors with maps, and they come up and they say, excuse me, where's the campus? And actually, there is no campus, because the university is actually spread out inside the city. So as soon as you leave the college or the classroom, you're actually in the center of the city. You don't need to take a bus or a shuttle bus or a transfer. You're actually in the city with all the shops, restaurants, theatres, museums and parks, and you can enjoy them as soon as you step outside. The content of your program um, is designed to give you a very good introduction, not only to Oxford and the UK, but also to different academic study skills. So all the time, you'll be learning how to debate, how to negotiate, how to formulate your ideas and defend them. And because the students all, come, all have different majors, we try and give a general spectrum program, so it's something new for everybody. So we'll be looking at British history, uh, literature, uh, social life, politics, um, drama, etc., as well as helping you with your academic writing, your presentation skills, and other study skills. So we try to make the content challenging. We want to give you something new, uh, but we also want you to develop your confidence. And that's probably something that we can only offer in Oxford. A lot of people were asking us, um, why didn't you do online programs throughout the COVID? Well, our philosophy is that we really want you to actually visit Oxford. We want you to experience Oxford. We want you to make friends with our own students. And actually, students from this university have uh, since you've been coming to Oxford, you've always made good friends with Hartford students. Sometimes Hartford students have come and actually lived in Taiwan because they made so many friends. So that is a very important part of our programs, and that's something we felt we couldn't offer online. So the classrooms are usually in very historic buildings. Um, I mean, we've just been in your brand new state-of-the-art luxury international office, which is very, very impressive. We've had a lovely tour with uh, with our friends from the international office. But in Oxford, it's a lot older and it's very traditional. And a lot of the classrooms could be two, three, or four hundred years old. So the good news uh, about Oxford is that you can walk everywhere. You don't need to take taxis, buses. Um, the, the historic center of Oxford, which is where most of the university buildings are, is probably only about one centimeter, sorry, not one centimeter, one <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, jet lag. Uh, one kilometre uh, square. So actually, you can walk from one side to the other. Uh, you can also pass some beautiful parks um, in the, in the centre. And every corner you turn, you'll see something that inspires you. So, as well as spending time in the classroom, we want you to experience the rest of England. So, we, uh, your first study visit will be to the wonderful city of London, which is one of the world's great cultural capitals. And in the, uh, in the first, well, in both photographs, in fact, you can see the River Thames. Now, the Thames River is very wide and deep in London, and that's why London became the capital. But also in Oxford, you can see the Thames River, where it's much, much smaller. In fact, it's only about 20 or 30 metres across. Uh, but it's interesting to see the difference between the Thames in Oxford and the Thames in London. And if you're looking at these photographs, you can see London doesn't have so many high-rise buildings. Um, so you get these wonderful skies, especially uh, sunrise and sunset. And it's, uh, there's lots of museums and galleries in London, most of which are free. And before you visit London, we give you a lecture introducing you to the highlights of the British Museum and the National Gallery, which is one of the world's great collections of Western art. As a contrast to London, there, we also organised a trip whereby you explore the countryside just outside Oxford. So these scenes are around about 40 minutes to one hour by coach from Oxford, and the Cotswolds is a series of historic villages which are so beautiful that are often used as uh, scenes and locations in TV dramas and movies. And over on the other photograph shows Blenheim Palace, which is the birthplace of Britain's most famous Prime Minister, um, Sir Winston Churchill, and it's a great example of classical 17th century architecture. There's also a chance to visit Stratford-on-Avon, which is the birthplace of William Shakespeare, who's uh, England's most famous dramatist. 
And you can see there are a lot of these, we call them Tudor-style houses, so these wooden houses. Um, and there used to be houses like this all over the country, uh, especially in London. But there's a, uh, because they're made of wood, it's very easy for them to catch fire. So there's not so many places now in Britain where you can still see them. At the end of your program, we ask you to give a presentation very much like this. We have a big uh, lecture theatre, and you'll be working with other students throughout your four-week program to prepare a presentation, which you give on the last day. And uh, students will be asking you questions, and your tutor will be giving you some comments. And it's a very nice way to finish the program. And a lot of students feel a little bit nervous before their presentation, but afterwards you'll feel a real sense of confidence. And we actually teach you presentation skills throughout the program. So after the presentation, which happens at the end of the program, we will organise a gala dinner for you. But before we do that, we have a certificate ceremony. So every person will receive their certificate. And we also organise a, uh, a drinks party, which is normally held outside in our college garden. So this is a very special event, and everyone dresses up very nicely. Um, we have a drink of champagne, and it's outdoors, and it's just a very, very nice way to finish the programme. So, of course, here um, you can see these gala dinners taking place. Um, this happens right, usually at the final evening of your programme, and you can see held in our historic dining hall, which is uh, very, very old, and this is a very, very Oxford way of having a dinner. So we eat in, in Hartford at the long tables, and so this is quite common in Oxford within the colleges, and it's just a nice way of speaking to your, your friends, your teachers, um, the staff, and of course to each other. And you can see it's by candlelight, so it's, it's a very, very special occasion. So a very, very important part of the programme are the residential advisors. They actually live alongside you. They will come to the airport with you, they will bring you back to Oxford, and they will help you to settle into your life and into your accommodation at the college. And every day they will speak English to you. So by the end of the programme, your English level will be very high because you'll be speaking English all day long. Um, and the RAs will organise social activities for you after your classes and after dinner. So there's lots of things to do in Oxford and the RAs will show you. So here are some photographs of the RAs. They're actually our students, and they also are very interested to meet you as well. And so, as Andrew mentioned, many of the RAs have actually come over to Taiwan, also to uh, Japan and Hong Kong as well. Um, and they, they love to meet students from other countries, so they're really interested to meet you. And often, they make very good friends with the, the students who come on the programmes. So they'll organise things like walking tours, um, punting, which is going on roads on the river, um, museum tours, tours of other colleges, sporting events, and karaoke, and that kind of thing. So each evening, they have a programme of events for you. So on the accommodation, um, we have a number of accommodations, some are older, some are uh, maybe 500 years old, and some are more modern, um, because our college is almost 1,000 years old, so we have a, a different range of accommodations. So some are in the very centre of Oxford, and some are a 10 minute walk away. So this is our main site, this is the oldest part of the college. And in this corner, these, um, these rooms and uh, accommodations are about 500 years old. So everywhere you go in Oxford, 
you will see many, many old buildings, all very beautiful. This is an example of our more modern accommodation. All of our bedrooms are for one person, so um, you can see here that they're all very comfortable. They all have sinks and wardrobes and, of course, desks for you to, to do some work. But um, they're all, all very clean, and each day the, we have cleaners to clean the rooms, so it's, it's a very comfortable way to, to spend four weeks in Oxford. And for each group, we organise airport transfers. So please don't worry about how you get from Heathrow Airport to Oxford. It's about 55 miles or one and a half hours, depending on traffic. But we will pick you up at the airport, and then at the end of the programme, we will take you back to the airport safely. Now, because we have many partners in Asia, and we welcome the group leader. So here you see, um, I think this is from a couple of years ago, um, all of the people you see here are group leaders who actually bring the groups over to Oxford, and we organise a social occasion each week. So here you see professors from Japan, from Ireland, from Taiwan, from America, and Japan as well. Um, so this happens each week, so we welcome the group leaders and often they get to meet other professors from other universities. So this is the, the final step of the programme, of the presentation. So what is the next step? So um, thank you for listening and if you would like to have more information then we recommend please speak with the international office and they have more information um, about it. And we hope to see many of you in Oxford. But before we finish, we actually have a very short film of about six minutes. So um, we'll just show you that. That will give you more information. And I think we're going to put this PowerPoint on, on the website. Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, so you'll be able to see it in more detail. But thank you very much for listening. Shish Anyman, Shish. We've been welcoming students from overseas for more than 800 years. In fact, the first overseas student came in 1190. So Oxford is well used to welcoming people from all around the world. When students come to Hartford, they will come to a really old college within the University of Oxford. So it's a great chance to experience our culture, experience our food, and of course, take part in our wonderful programs. So each programme that we write is individually tailored for each of the university partners that we have. So that means that each programme is bespoke and unique just for that university. We run programmes for law students, maths, physics, uh, chemistry, literature based programmes, Shakespeare programmes. Our international programmes team has a lot of experience in designing, running and managing our summer programmes. And we visit our partners, we talk to their faculty and international programmes office to find out the best kind of programmes that they would like us to design. I think it's important that many of our team have actually lived overseas because they can appreciate what it's like for the students to come over here to experience different food, different cultures and different languages. Here at the International Programmes Department we have a system which we call the Residential Advisors or the RAs. They look after the students right from the moment when they arrive until the end of the programme. When they first arrive, the students are often quite nervous because usually it's their first time travelling abroad. This is a chance for them to open up with the RAs and we usually find that by the end, they've all got to know each other much better. Today we're going to have the welcome tea. So this is a very traditional English welcome tea and it's to say thank you and welcome to Hartford College and welcome to Oxford University. I think it's really important that the people who are showing the students around Hartford are people who themselves have a connection to the college. 
I think it makes a huge difference, especially for the students, because they see us as friends, they don't see us as teachers or anything like that. All we want to do really is allow the students to have fun. When they arrive, we try and gauge what kind of stuff they want to do. And then while the students are here, we try and cater for their needs. So we do various activities within Oxford. They're very keen to see British culture mostly, but we also do activities outside of Oxford. The main role of the RA is to organise evening activities, as well as making conversations in English. This helps the visiting students to practise their English. All students on our short programmes get to stay in single study bedrooms with shared bathrooms, just like Hartford undergraduate students. Oxford is actually really wonderfully situated because we're so central and we're so close to so many different famous locations. We're directly opposite the Bodleian Library and next to the Sheldonian Theatre. Whichever programme you come on, we guarantee that you will improve your confidence and your communication skills because we believe that is something that's vital that every student takes back with them to their own universities. On the final morning of our course, each student is expected to deliver a presentation in front of an audience. It's an opportunity for them to showcase the language that they've learnt and also to share their research topic or passions that they've picked up during their time here. When the students complete the course, they will receive a certificate signed by the principal of Hartford College and will be awarded during the gala dinner. Hello everybody, good evening. I'd like to say thank you to you all. Tonight's a very, very special occasion. You've all worked very, very hard over the last few weeks, so please relax and enjoy the dinner. And we wish you all the very best for the future and thank you for coming to Hartford College. So the gala dinner is the most formal ceremony at Hartford during the programmes. It's a candlelit dinner in the beautiful historic Hartford Hall. A little bit like in Harry Potter since. It's a way for the students to enjoy everything about their experience in Oxford and it's just a way for us to also say goodbye. It's definitely noticeable that there's a huge boost in their language skills after their stay here. As a languages student myself, I know that the best way to improve your spoken language is to be immersed in a language and in a, the culture surrounding it. Students come away with a sense of what it's like to live in the UK and experience the lifestyle in the UK. Many students tell us that they've been inspired in some way during their stay with us at Hartford. So this could be a new academic interest, or it could be a cultural experience, or it could be a new and rewarding friendship which will help to expand everyone's international horizons. I highly recommend this course. Oxford is the best university, also best program. The accommodation and the teachers, everything is perfect, you know. If you'd like to find out more information about our summer programmes, then please contact one of our international programmes team or have a look at the website of Hartford College. We look forward to welcoming your students next summer.
college start, college has started off as simple accommodation. But what happens now is that every week, all Oxford undergraduates will have their tutorial in the college. So the tutors are all associated with the college. So that's usually an hour, an hour and a half. But they will also attend lectures in the faculty. So, for example, if you're an engineering student, you'll have an engineering tutorial in your college with your tutor, and your tutor will give you an assignment every week, it's about 3,000 words, and the next week you discuss your assignment, but the rest of the time you're either in the library or you're in the engineering department attending your lectures. So when you finally get assessed, there will be, it's a combination of what happens in your college with your tutor, so you, your tutorials are assessed, but also in the external exams in the faculty. So it's slightly confusing, but every member of the university is both in a college and in a department. So does that help? Yeah. yeah. It's, only, it's only in Oxford and Cambridge uh, that this, um, this has developed. And actually, a lot of, we get a lot of visitors from universities around the world who want to replicate this system because it's actually very good for developing um, students' individual rapport with their tutors. Uh, the problem is it's quite expensive for universities to do because you have to have a very small ratio of tutors to students in order for it to be successful. But that's probably the reason why there are um, there have been a lot of discoveries and inventions and, and innovations in Oxford because um, the tutor gets the chance to identify the potential in the student at a lot closer level than in most universities. So that's that's kind of why it's uh, continued to be successful. And all the universities in the UK are public universities. We don't have private universities. So if you get into Oxford, then you actually get a really intensive education, but you don't pay any more than for any other UK university. Any other questions about uh, Oxford or programs or the UK in general? Just to let you know that um, in the summer in the UK, it's between 20 and 30 degrees, so it's not as hot as Taiwan, so actually you'll find it probably not quite as uh, humid when you come over to the UK. Uh, we'd actually left the UK yesterday and it was cold, it's about maybe 10 degrees or even colder, we've already had frost in the mornings, um, so definitely summer is a good time to come rather than winter. And also in the winter in the UK it tends to get dark around 3.30pm, so it's kind of, and it doesn't get the light till about 8am. So definitely summer is a good time. <laughs> and the summer in the UK, it stays light until about 9.30 p.m. You could be playing tennis and so on. It doesn't really get very dark. So July, August, which is when NTU groups traditionally come, that's actually the best time to visit the UK. Any other questions? For us, it's actually really nice just to be wearing some clothes <laughs> because yesterday we were in the airport wearing winter clothes. Actually, maybe we can ask you a question. So, as, as I mentioned before, this is the first time we have been to Taipei for three years. And we've been running this program for well over 10 years now. But it'd be interesting for us to know what kind of topics. Uh, Taiwanese students are interested in these days because that helps us, that, any input you can give us really helps us to design the content of our programs. For example, in the past we've had, there's been years, depending on popular culture, when things like Sherlock Holmes has been of great interest, you know, the students wanted to visit the Sherlock Holmes Museum in London. Uh, there's been other years when students have been very interested in developing their soft skills or their um, job interview techniques. So if any of you have any thoughts on what kind of academic or non-academic topics that, that, that your generation uh, are interested in, then please let us know because, again, we can incorporate that into our, into our programs for next year. Any suggestions? Ah. British Library. Ah, okay. Thank you, British Library. Excellent. Well, thanks for that suggestion. Yeah, I mean, Oxford itself has, I mean, our college is opposite the world's oldest university library, which is called the Bodleian Library, and um, that was actually the scene in some of the Harry Potter movies, so you, you, can, you, can do, you can do the tour of that. But the British Library, that's a really good idea. Thank you for that. We'll, we'll definitely look into that. Excellent. Any other things that. Um, yeah? Ah, oh, right. Sure. 
Excellent, very good. Well, actually, um, we have a lot of summer programs, and, and NTU, this has come up before. We've had uh, your students and faculty have actually asked us to give you extra homework, uh, extra academic writing tasks. So what we've done in the past is every week we give you an academic, an ap academic essay. We teach you how to structure it, we teach you how to write effective introductions and conclusions. So I think a lot of students in the conclusion, they tend to just repeat what they said in the main part of the text. So we teach you ways of developing it so that your conclusion becomes original. And also extra things like not to overuse certain words, um, how to vary your language, how to avoid plagiarism. So yeah, that's something that we, d we definitely do already. But the bad news for you is it means you get extra homework. <laughs> Any other suggestions? Two very good suggestions, by the way. Thank you for those. Any, any others? Yeah, one thing actually, uh, what I remember is that before you come over to Oxford, we actually send you um, a research, mini research project, which we ask you to complete before you come. And then within the first week, you have to present on an aspect of Oxford. So we give you a large choice. It could be a famous literary figure. It could be the history of a college. Um, it could be the um, some obscure terms that you can only find in Oxford or some, some historic Oxford traditions. And you have a couple of months to prepare a short presentation and then we ask you, this is a way to get you thinking about Oxford before you come over. Uh, but it's also very interesting for us to see uh, to see what kind of research you've been doing and which parts of Oxford uh, particularly interest you before you come. So that, that will be something. It won't take too long, but it will get you thinking a little bit about the study tour before you come. Absolutely, yeah, PhD students are very welcome. Um, we, uh, we've had uh, PhD students in the past. In PhDs in Oxford, they call them DPhil students, so it's the same thing. Um, but yes, I mean, you, you'd be, be more than welcome to come. Um, you, we, we can help you if you have any particular research interests you need to follow up. We can point you in the right direction. Um, on our programs, we, we have no upper age limit either. In fact, the oldest student we've ever had was 84. So you've got plenty of time, plenty of time to decide. No, but yeah, the PhD students are very welcome. Also, postdoc students too. Yes, okay, good question. I think, um, again, if you identify, uh, brainstorm a list of eight or ten things that you're interested in in general, and then have a look at Oxford and see how many of those things you can actually gain access to and how far they are, when they're open, when they're closed. I mean, for example, in my case, I'm very interested in arts and museums. So before I came to Taipei, I always check what exhibitions are on, um, you know, the, the, the Palace Museum, the Grand Palace Museum, isn't it, which I, I go to every time. So it could be anything. You could be interested in soccer, you could be interested in um, folklore or a particular writer. 
Um, and I think that if you if you approach um, a, any study abroad program really with a with a very positive like what can I do before I get there, then it will make things a lot easier when you actually do get there. Because instead of being passive, you'll be an active learner. And I think that's when, when you make your own discoveries, it's always always a, a very rewarding experience. So, what, what what things are you interested in? What, what kind of things in general do you like? Literature and arts, well, Oxford is the perfect place because it's, you've got Alice in Wonderland, you've got, um, you've got, uh, we actually do a, an Ox we've got an Oxford writer's tour as well, so there's things like, you know, Tolkien, who wrote The Lord of the Rings, he, he studied at Oxford, um, you've got, um, obviously, Shakespeare, if you go to London, there's all the museums and galleries, so there's, Oxford and London are probably the best places for literature and the arts. I mean, you, you can also see plays, you can go to see musicals. Um, those two cities really is probably the best that, uh, culture-wise, that England has to offer. Okay, you'll actually get some free time. So, generally speaking, in the week, so Monday to Thursday, you, you'll have lessons. But then Friday is a study visit day, so you get on your programme three study visits. And then the weekends are free, so you, you asked about maximising your time. So you'll have three weekends, you know, to maybe to travel down to London or to travel to see other cities. Oxford's quite well located. Um, it's fairly easy to travel to other cities like Liverpool or York or Newcastle or, you know, many other places as well. So, yeah, because you're there for uh, four weeks, so you do get some free time at the weekends. Yeah, good question. Hello, Wendy Ma. Have you got any courses related to law? Courses related to law. Yeah, on the, we, we do, we have actually in the past run specific law students, uh, sorry, a, a law program. We had one from an American university and one from, I think it was Tsinghua University. But actually on this program, we don't have any law, specific law content because it's, that would be too specific. Uh, would, and because all the students are from different majors, then it wouldn't be practical. But in Oxford, uh, every week, there, the university runs free workshops and lectures in the departments. And the law faculty is fairly close to our college. So the best thing to do would be, before you come again, do a little bit of research and see which free lectures that you could attend in the evening, because sometimes they have uh, legal moots or they have introductions to famous cases, and also you will have the chance to uh, interact with some of our RAs who are law students, and they will be able to tell you a little bit about the, the kinds of things they study and the peculiarities of the case law system in England, which is actually very different from constitutional law systems that they have in most other countries. Um, thanks very much, everybody, for coming. Um, on your way out, please take one of our bookmarks and on the back you'll see a link to our website and you can actually view the film again you know, at, a, at a quiet time. So uh, thank you very much and we hope to see you in Oxford.